Tasty Chocolate Galaxy! What is up guys? Jane Poop here, back with the finale of Super Mario Galaxy! And then in the last video, uh, we have uh, finished, we've gotten every purple comet done. We've gotten all the purple coins in every galaxy that needed a cr that didn't have a crown, but now they do have a crown. And uh, in this video, we are going to beat Bowser again and do the, the final galaxy after that, because the next galaxy we can only get after beating the game. Uh, after beating ba uh, after getting all the stars with both Mario and Luigi, so we need to beat the game twice, basically. Or if, or if you prefer just beating Bowser, then beat Bowser four times, basically, in total. So yeah, because you basically beat Bowser twice in both each playthrough. So basically, you, in total, it's four times. So we're just gonna go through this level. And hopefully finish it because we're nearly done. And I seriously want to finish Galaxy 1 and I want to get onto Galaxy 2 because Galaxy 2 is way better in my opinion. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. Alright, here we go. Oh, okay. Oh god. Dun, 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 dun. All right, all the way. Oh wait! Oh, it's the quicksand that if you go in it, it's instant death. It's not the one where you can safely walk on. Good thing. Oh, you start back here. Seriously, you gotta do that fire part again. Why? Du, du, du. We. Don't bounce on. Oh, I mean, bump on that, Luigi. And as for the final galaxy, we're actually going to do it with both Mario and Luigi. So then the video is slightly longer. This won't be a long video at all. Um, but but of course it will be long enough. Uh, it'll probably be like uh, half half an hour or something, unlike others. Hopefully my Galaxy 2 video should be longer, of course, because obviously Galaxy 2 is longer. We want to try and get, like, less videos, but more stuff done in those videos. So, but longer videos, less videos, but longer videos. So, it's almost like. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and then I want to get, I, I also want to get ga the Galaxy games out of the way. So then I don't have to keep buying Galaxies from each shop that they're available in over and over again each time so yeah you can see my point there so oh my god Luigi we need to go over there Okay. Oh, th not backflip! Or do- Oh my god, what were you doing, Luigi? Don't do that. Okay. Oh crap. Oh, thank god. Right, we're going here. So then I think if we die, we'll always respawn here, so... me! <laughs> This is the finale Off to Bowser we go oh, oh, oh. We skip that now because uh, then again we might soften if we go further but oh, I'm not sure but I've heard the game go soft lock if you try to do a skip uh, We don't really need the one up but I'm gonna get it anyway so yeah, here we go, beating Bowser's ass again. Finally, you got here just in time to see the creation of a galaxy in the center of the universe. Watch and reap. 
Yeah, we've seen it before. From this galaxy, I'll rule a great empire with peach on my side, and it'll last forever. I'll rule every beautiful corner of the universe. So, Luigi, as you get hey, I've got a big plan, so stop it, you is not on top of my list! Okay. Alright then, it's time to beat Bowser's ass again. Beating Bowser's ass time, oh my god. Alright. Oh, oh, nice! And then, boom! We hit him there. Uh, even though we don't really need stop, it's but I'm going to get them anyway. It's very useful. Huh! Okay. Oh, I didn't get that coin, but it doesn't matter. Ah, oh, I wanted to hit you, but I can't. And, uh, oh, I can't hit you from there. Got you there! And then I'm going to kick you! There we go. And then this easier planet with the trees, you can just hit, you can just use the trees to hit him. Oh, come on! Ah, oh, got ya! Oh, you're just right next to a tree. So we can just hit you again. And then, boom! <laughs> that tree is so shrink in the cutscene. <laughs> it's still there! Oh my god. The finale part, which will only take like a few minutes. Uh, this is not even a long part of the game, really. This is going to be indeed a short video, wow. But it'll only be slightly longer because I'll be adding things to it. Uh, because there's also Rosalina's library, which I've already recorded. Uh, but I'll add it in the video. So yeah, into this video. So yeah. So this will be a short video for me to record, but it will be a long, slightly longer for all of you guys. So yeah, because you like things extended, don't you? It's like I like watching extended versions of certain films. Uh, because it's longer and mostly uncut. So yeah, and watching things uncut, my god, is a must. The most of the time. So yeah, um, I'm going to wait for Bowser to... Oh, come on. Boom! And he's like, oh! And then... No, you naughty boy, we're going to kick you! And then we're going to kick you! I'm going to eat my galaxy rip. You have to watch these cutscenes again. in the ass. Yeah. And now it's just time to get that star. Like this. the game once more. And we gotta watch these cutscenes again, but eh, it's good to watch cutscenes in here. Luigi has saved the Princess Peach from Bowser from the galaxy. Mm, that was a good song. Or was it? I don't know. Yeah, it's all melting down. I can just eat my galaxy while watching this. Mm. Oh god. And there's Bowser! Ha <laughs> ha ha! Let's bully him! Okay. Oh, 
No, my God, see my play. This can't be happening. Tried to uh, talk while I have Ripple Galaxy in my mouth, but it didn't really go out well, but. And yeah, everything gets sucked in the black hole, but it's apparently safe. Oh, Luma. Do you hear the baby stars? These newborn will grow to become galaxies someday. When stars die, they turn to stardust and scatter across the cosmos. Eventually, that stardust reforms to create a new star, and so the cycle of life continues. But the cycle never repeats itself in quite the same way. So you'll see. Back at the Mushroom Kingdom at last. Huh? There's Gup here. Everyone else has appeared. Pruning the Toads, Queen Bee, and Dino Piranha. And Princess Peach and Bowser. the essence of stars, even all of you. Ah. And say it again, Luigi! Welcome! Welcome, new galaxies! Yep, and once again, Tasty Chocolate Galaxy! I love them so much, along with drinking the milkshakes and hot chocolates. Yeah, that's a wonderful time to say what you wish about the chocolate galaxies. And this time, the images are quite different in this version of the credits. When you when you do it the sec when you beat Bowser the second time after getting all stars. So yeah. Um, 
Uh, but they still feature Mario, even if you play as Luigi. Oh, there's Mario on the, uh, Stingray. <laughs> or is it just a ray? I'm not sure. Because I know what Stingrays are, but I don't know if they're just rays, if they don't sting you. Huh, whatever. Oh, he's being chased by dead dry bones. <laughs> dead Coopers. <laughs> and Dusty Dune. I think that's that, uh, Bullet Bill mission, or is that that one that... Before the Eve of the Secret Side. Oh, there's King Thing, who we've not met in a long time. Or the Skeleton Jaws. <laughs> I kind of wish they made a new Jaws film, because the recent one was like in 1987, which is like a long time ago now. <laughs> ah, whatever. Uh, Mario talking to Green Toad. <laughs> oh, galaxy is really yummy! So, my thoughts on Super Mario Galaxy. Oh, there's Dino Piranha, uh, Fiery Dino Piranha. Oh, and the, uh, the small, uh, Gateway Galaxy with coins. So, making it look like Saturn or Uranus. And there's Yoshi, which is the only appearance Yoshi appears in this game. Not counting the file select. But Yoshi has a bigger role in Galaxy 2. There we go, the watermelons. There we go. Boo! As well. Oh, there we go! There's a picture of Luigi! He's being chased by a Banzai Bill. Oh, there's more Luigi images, okay. Even if you don't play as Luigi, you get these as well, I think. So yeah, my, my thoughts on Galaxy 1 is that, um, oh, Mario and Luigi, um, it's really good of its concept, uh, especially with it being space-themed, but I also like the fact that you can then finish the game again with a different character, so, and the fact after that, you then get a galaxy which you cannot visit until you've done both characters done. So yeah, that's kind of cool how they did that. There's Rosalina, instead of that image of the multiple bamboos in the boulder, guys. And there's Bowser! Mario trying to punch Bowser in the belly button. <laughs> okay, just Wait, what galaxy is that taken from? It looked purple in the background. It's one of the Bowser reactor or something. Mario and Peach on a date in space? Okay. Do, do. Oh, just Gateway Galaxy. Do, 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 do. Mario Galaxy tastes like chocolate. And it's so yummy. Thank you for playing my game. I kind of prefer the thank you so much for playing my game with Mario. And then you get this cutscene. Rosalina in the Gateway Galaxy with the Loomis and some seagulls. Thank you. I will watch over you from beyond the stars.
Yeah, the Grand Finale Galaxy is now open. Yeah, Grand Finale Galaxy, yes. You only get this galaxy after finishing the game as Mario and as Luigi. Because beating it as Mario unlocks Luigi Galaxy, which we, we were doing. And then beating Luigi Galaxy after that gives you this galaxy. And where do you where do you go to get to this galaxy, you wonder? I'm gonna save, because obviously if you don't, then you might not be able to go there. So it's recommended you save, so um Uh So we should have two crowns here. And we're gonna do this with Mario first, because obviously, um Well, we're gonna do it with both characters and no mail from Toad this time. So so where do you go to get this galaxy? It's not in a dome. It's not in the garden, obviously. Well, you go to the trial galaxies, which is here. But you might think, oh, there's no other Luma there. Well, go here. There he is. There she is. Yep, there it is. There's the grand finale galaxy. And what is the Grand Finale Galaxy, you may ask? Well... Let's look at the mission name. The Star Festival. And let's look at the preview. It's the intro level of the game. Yes! The one that you cannot- that you don't- that you never play as with- that you never play with Luigi. And it's only in- is only with Mario. Yeah, that. But you collect purple coins. But don't worry, it's not time limit and all that. There's no purple coin music. It's the Star Festival itself. Yeah. And there's more characters here this time, so yeah. That's what Grand Finale Galaxy is. It's just this. Peach's Castle. But, we, but obviously, we're going to do this twice, so then we can do it with Luigi as well. It's very simple to do. Uh, you just get all the purple coins and then boom. You're pretty much done. There's penguins everywhere, there's gear modes everywhere. Getting all the purple coins past the Peach's Castle. Then we get on top of the toad ship. Getting on all the purple coins And getting past the rabbit Then on to this toad over there And it's male toad here And you get a star there in front of Peach's castle He has mail for you Mario, a special letter has arrived you I'll read it out loud to him Congratulations! For saving all the power stars and, and planes at the very end, we would like you to send a galaxy size thanks. Until next time, the Super Mario Galaxy staff. I sent a picture to your console's album, so look for it. Uh, so yeah, the, the difference here in the Wii version, it will go to your Wii message board. But because we're on Switch, it will go to your albums. And it will take a screenshot automatically, that, as you can see up there. We'll look at them later. So, yeah, there's one for each character, so, and you cannot go to Peach's Castle, unfortunately. But what we can do is get the star. We got the power star with Mario. Never seen Mario's animation? There you go, for this playthrough. 121. Yeah, over the amount you would have in Super Mario 64. And yes, we are going to save. Because obviously we need to. Does he have mail? No, he doesn't. So yeah, that's Mario done. There's a cool glitch you can do here as well, I believe. You go up top here and then... If you if you time it right, you can literally make Mario stuck. And it's almost like you could put a skateboard in front of it. So it's like he's skateboarding. Uh, I'm going to try and do that. Or not. Uh, Alright. No, wrong button. Okay. I guess I might do that with Luigi. It's weird how you have to save before quitting. I kind of wish you can press quit, but not save. I kind of wish you could do that, but they don't let you do that. Because, unlike other games where they do let you do that. Now we're going to select the same file, 
and do it again, but with Luigi. You can see complete. Luigi. But we need one more with Luigi. Uh, do we get another icon for the... No, unless uh, we get this star and then we might get something. I'm not sure. I don't know if you get a new icon or something. Oh, there's mail from Toad. Not that we need it. It's probably just uh, 21 ups, but okay. Yeah, just 21 ups. Not that we need it, but yeah, whatever. Uh, it's the same thing. Hello, Six Day Luigi. How are you doing, buddy? Doing good. All right. So yeah. Uh, and then we just go behind here again. With, but this time we're doing it with Luigi. And then. Uh, do do Then up to the grand finale galaxy again. One more time with Luigi. The Star Festival once again. This the final level. And this is also the only time Luigi can visit this place. Yeah. Uh, there's no. I thought there were purple coins there, but no, there isn't. Do, 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 do. We finished this game. This is the final level of Galaxy 1 with Mario and Luigi. We can only get you by beating it with both characters. This is literally Luigi's castle from the intro of the game. And we're just collecting some purple coins. Grabbing over the purple coins in just a few minutes, and then talk to the male toad over there. Getting another letter from Luigi. And yeah, you can see we got the other one. And then, lastly, we got the last power star with Luigi. So, yeah. We got the power star. So, yeah, that is... Uh, all the stars collected, and yeah, I will save. Oh god, it's burnt. So yeah, and there's nothing from you, Toad. Uh, do you have anything to say? That's a minute. Do you have anything else to say? Other than that, no. Because sometimes you might make him say, No layers today, or something like that. <gasps> oh god, just no hiccups. Oh god. Let's see if we could do that trick with Luigi, because... There's a glitch here you can do. Um, I'm gonna try and do it, with Luigi. Um, one. Oh god, damn it! Da -da 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 -da. Oh come on, Luigi! Do the glitch. Oh, come on. So I'm trying to do a glitch where you can get slightly stuck while in like that animation there. It's so funny if you do that, if you manage to do that. So I thought, oh, I'll just try it out. We're gonna try this glitch out. Almost, oh, uh, whatever. But you can get slightly stuck if you time it right. Uh, it is slightly tricky, but. I guess the only few things I need to show off is the library, and then I think that's about it. So, let's go in the library. Long loading, apparently. Oh, there we go. How did Rosalina just respond in there? Okay. Let us begin. Alright. Let's read a book. Chapter 1. The Celestial Duo Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. 
What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asked the star child. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find out your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the celestial mother began. Chapter 2 Starbit Days passed with no sight of the comet, or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl above the rumble of her belly. But... Before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and an apricot-flavoured tea. But... I forgot to bring water! At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter, and the girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh, and the girl couldn't help but join in. Alright, maybe just a nibble. Learning far out the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. Wow. Chapter 3 The Comet A beam of light pierced through the ship's window, thinking it was the morning sun. The girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering her. Uh, the little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get that comet! The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look! Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits in my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm, I I'll bet there's water here too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. Chapter 4, The Dream One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother's retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you, like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I'll turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama, why? 
The pair travelled through the starry skies, and though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now, now, Luma, the clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5 Home The kitchen will go here, and the library will go over there, the girl said busily to herself. We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she'd been bustling about a fe feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth... It's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and fern furniture unlike any they had ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate, it was certainly spacious. But still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was so large for the two small residents. That night, clutching her favourite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Chapter 6 Friends Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, an apricot-coloured planet appeared on the horizon. From the planet, another luma of the same colour emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then one Lumas broke the silence. My mama! At once, the apricot Luma parroted back. My mama, my mama! My mama, my mama! The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and, they, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh. And that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop up from the apricot planet. They were all different colours but they all shouted the same thing. My mama, my mama! The sight of all the shouting loomers only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The loomers just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she would begin moving all the Loomers into the new house. Chapter 7 The Telescope After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated in sight. It, it was smaller than a star bit. How strange, it's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming in even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother 
would sled down that hill. She remembers having pic picnics with her mother on that hill on bright and windy days. And... I want to go home! I want to go home right now! The girl burst into tears and the Loomers didn't know what to do. I want to go home! I want to go back to my house by the hill! I want to see my mother! The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I know all along that she wasn't out there in the sky. Because... Because... She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. Chapter 8. The Wish Though usually quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Luma drew close and tried to comfort, comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama, because she's a part of you. That means she's always close by. It's like me. I love star bits because they remind me of my mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop the tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wine grin. I have an idea. I will transform into a comet. A soaring comet that can carry you all on this journey. With that Luma trailing bands of white soared high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom! Kablam! The ground shook and a bright light poured out of the crater that the Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet trail, and when then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes. But how? she kept asking. Our destiny as Lumas is to transform into things, said a red Luma who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets. We can become all of these things. When I grow up, I want to become a star that makes someone special smile, said a green Luma. A blue Luma chimed in. That Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? All of the Lumas together said, No more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in a whisper and she pulled the Loomers close and hugged them. From that day on, star bits no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet, its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Chapter 9, the final chapter, Family. With its many Loomers and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the Loomers were proud to call it home. At a welcoming party for a new Loomer, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, All right, everyone, let's make a cake. A cake sprinkled with star bits. Then it will be a star cake. The Loomers ex excitedly began to gather the ingredients. As she watched the Loomers scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, This is my family now, and I will stay with them until they are ready to leave the nest. And when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile. Because that's what makes a mother happiest. That night, when the girl lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be nice to return home once every 100 years to nap in my favourite sleeping nook. The comet carrying the Loomers and the girl continues on its journey to this very day. With more family members in tow, 
than can be counted, it's said that the comet visits the girl's home planet once every hundred years, its proud white tail glittering in the sky. The end. That's all. My story is finished. Yeah, this story... It's actually a sad one, almost. It's basically... You can think of it as a sad story, almost, because, um... It's about a girl who was lonely and all that, and, uh... But then made friends with the Loomers and all that, so... And she wanted to see her mother, but she couldn't. But it went happy in the end. And after all of that, you can actually read it again by just going to the book. And you can select your own chapter. Shall we read it again? No, 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 I'm kidding. Um, so, yeah. That's what it's basically like at the library. And you can also, with, I think, one of the analog sticks, um, uh, I, or, or on the Switch at least, uh, uh, I think with the nunchuck on uh, Wii, or maybe the D-pad, you can also uh, flip a page back. So, let's say... Oh crap, I, I didn't read all that and I accidentally pressed A. You can go back a page. Uh, so yeah, you can do that as well. Uh, uh, which is something that I don't think many people knew about, but I don't know if they do, but they might do. So now, just, now we'll go onto the file select. So on with the file select screen, you can see after getting all stars, your file becomes sparkly. And then, the counter for how many times you died appears here. And it's different for each playthrough, so you got... I died more times as Mario than with Luigi. Yeah. Yeah, okay. In fact, I don't remember a death counter being in the Wii version of this game. Because I, I, know, I knew there's one in Galaxy 2, but I never knew it existed in this game. Or I must have not seen things right, but... Yeah, apparently it's in this game as well. Um, uh, do we get a new icon? No, we don't. It's just the Luigi icon that we unlock. So, yeah. Uh, and you unlock the Luigi icon after beating Mario Galaxy. Beating the game as Mario. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that is pretty much... Um, Super Mario Galaxy then. So, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this series. You can also do two-player here. Two people can play together. Open the menu with the select and... Uh, yeah. You're ready to play. It is different with Switch and Wii, but... <laughs> That's a cool move. <laughs> I'm gonna say the multiplayer in Galaxy 2 is slightly better than the first one. Uh, so yeah, I would like to thank you guys for watching the series. I hope you enjoy these series of videos. And I shall see you guys in the next playthrough, which will be Super Mario Galaxy 2. So I will be chomping on some more Galaxy. So I shall see you guys next time, James. Well, see you guys next time. Bye!